Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the fourth video in the series on radiographic technique. This is the third part on the set of videos on contrast media. This time around, we'll be looking at the toxic effects of contrast media on specific organs. In the last video, we learned contrast media reactions can be classified into dose-dependent and dose-independent reactions. We learned that the dose-dependent reactions occur at high doses, high as molar contrast media, and in patients with predisposing conditions. But, the dose-independent reactions occur in patients that normally wouldn't react to contrast media, even at low doses with low as molar contrast media. In the next video, we will learn about mechanisms by which dose-independent reactions are believed to come about. In this video, let us learn how the dose-dependent reactions occur, based on different organs that the contrast media targets. What we consider a contrast media reaction actually happens because the contrast media had some negative effect on one or more organs. Let us look at seven common organ systems where contrast media exhibits its toxic effects. We'll be looking at vascular toxicity, soft tissue toxicity, cardiovascular toxicity, hematological changes, nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, and thyrotoxicosis. We start out with vascular toxicity, which is the toxic effect of contrast media on the blood vessels. Contrast media can negatively affect the two main types of blood vessels, the veins and the arteries. For the venous system, many contrast agents are given intravenously through the veins. And if you've ever received an injection, you would agree that pain can be experienced at the site of injection. Another toxic effect that contrast has on the venous system is stasis. Because the flow of blood is slow in the venous system, a stagnancy or stasis of the contrast media can occur. In this, the contrast does not move through the vein, it accumulates in one place. This would cause pain. It commonly occurs in the veins of the arm. There, the pain is relieved by adducting the arm. Thirdly, the contrast media can cause inflammation of the vein and any clots within the vein. This is known as thrombophlebitis and will cause a delayed pain. Meanwhile, contrast media injected through the arteries can cause a sensation of heat and pain. The risk factor for vascular toxicity is the use of high as molar contrast media. This means that less toxic effect to the veins and arteries occur when low as molar contrast media, especially the non-ionic type, is used. Next is soft tissue toxicity. Contrast can leak from the blood vessels to the soft tissue. This is known as extravasation. It causes the area to swell, pain to be felt, and a reddening of the skin known as erythema. These eventually cease with no lasting effects, but can be treated immediately with ice packs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, steroids, painkillers, and so on. Soft tissue toxicity is also more likely to occur in use of high as molar contrast media and a high dose rate, like the ones achieved with automatic pump injectors during CT examinations. Next is cardiovascular toxicity. Contrast media can cause symptoms that are linked to cardiovascular disease. These include hypotension, hypertension, cardiac arrhythmia in the form of tachycardia and bradycardia, congestive heart failure, and so on. It can cause these symptoms through three different mechanisms. First, highest molar contrast media binds to the free calcium in the blood. When it does this, the amount of free ionic calcium in the body is reduced. From our knowledge of physiology, when there is too little ionic calcium in the body, cardiac arrhythmia is experienced. Secondly, contrast media has the ability to increase the activity of the vagus nerve. A hyperactive vagus nerve will depress the activity of the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes of the heart. The sinoatrial node is the natural pacemaker of the heart. This means that it determines how fast and how much your heart beats. When the activity of the sinoatrial node is depressed, the heart rate is reduced, which is known as bradycardia, and the heart contracts less, this is known as asystole. Thirdly, introduction of contrast media into the blood means that more particles are in the blood. This implies that the osmolality of blood is higher. This would induce an osmotic pressure that would cause water to move into the blood vessels. All this was explained in the first video of contrast media. When there is more fluid in the blood vessels, the volume of blood is higher. When the volume of blood is high, the cardiac output is higher, this means that more blood is pumped from the heart. When the heart pumps more blood, the blood pressure is increased, and a too high blood pressure is hypertension. If you haven't gotten all this, go over this last part one more time to understand things better. 
People likely to suffer cardiovascular toxicity include patients that already have cardiac diseases and during investigations that involve injecting contrast media into the heart. We have looked at the toxic effects of contrast media on blood vessels. Now, let us look at the effects on the blood itself. First, contrast media causes a breakdown or hemolysis of the red blood cells. Secondly, it causes red blood cells to aggregate together and coagulate. Also, contrast media slightly reduces the ability of blood to clot. And it doesn't stop there, it also has a potentiating effect on a certain anticoagulant called heparin. This means that contrast media will make heparin more powerful than it normally is. This means even more impaired blood clotting will happen when there is both heparin and contrast media in the blood, compared to when only heparin is present. Also, sickle cell crises is more likely to occur when contrast media is introduced into a patient with sickle cell anemia. It also causes the red blood cells to be rigid and deformed. Lastly, eosinophilia, an increase in the volume of white blood cells in the blood, has been observed to occur between 24 and 72 hours after contrast media has been injected. The risk factor for hematological changes like these are the use of highest molar contrast media and high doses. We should point out that these changes occur due to various mechanisms. To keep this video simple, we haven't gone into the details of these mechanisms. Next is nephrotoxicity, the toxic effect of contrast media on the kidneys. Effects as severe as kidney failure can occur due to contrast media. These effects happen due to the following mechanisms. First, contrast media causes the osmolality of fluid in the renal tubules to increase, this reduces the amount of water that is reabsorbed from the tubules. When less water is reabsorbed from the renal tubules, they swell. Swollen renal tubules cause greater pressure within the kidney, decreasing the amount of blood that flows into the kidneys. When less blood flows into the kidney, the glomerular filtration rate is decreased, implying impaired renal functioning. Also, contrast media tends to irritate and injure the tissue of the renal tubules and cause tubular obstruction. Nephrotoxic effects of contrast media are more likely to occur in patients that already have a compromised renal function. Other groups of patients that are at risk of suffering it include diabetics, highly dehydrated patients, elderly patients, patients suffering from multiple myeloma, and in cases where a large dose of contrast media is used. Next is neurotoxicity, the toxic effects of contrast media on the brain. Contrast media that flows through the arteries can cross the blood-brain barrier and get to the brain. If this occurs, the patient will experience seizures, headaches, dizziness, visual disturbance, or confusion. The risk factors for neurotoxicity due to contrast media include the use of highest molar types that contain sodium as their cation in epileptic patients and patients suffering from cerebral tumors. The final organ that we would be looking at is the thyroid gland. Toxic effect of contrast media on the thyroid is seen as an elevated level of thyroid hormone in the body. This means that contrast media causes the thyroid gland to secrete excessive thyroid hormone. This would lead to a too high rate of metabolism in the body. Patients suffering from goiter are at risk of experiencing thyrotoxicosis due to contrast media. That concludes the third part on contrast media. We wrap it all up in the next video. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.